Hey there! Today we're going to talk about another one of those Ratnam and Sons pens. This one, again, was sent to me by Iris of Berlin. Thanks a lot. Um, and today we'll be talking, I, I've already discussed this one, uh, which is the number 15, brown ebonite, and this is number 12 in green ebonite, and I love this one too. I'll cover the parts of the pen, tell what I like about it, what I don't like about it, and then we'll do a writing sample. On top of the cap there is this sort of a diamond-like thing. You have the clip. Uh, the clip says Ratnam Sun. It's gold colored, but it's not actually gold. Has a little vent hole on both sides to make sure the cap doesn't actually draw a vacuum. Uh, you can move that clip. It's springy. It feels like something I could bend, so I won't push it too far. It's green mottled ebonite. Really nice material. Looks really nice. Note how the barrel is fairly consistent and tapers down there. You see that? It just tapers. And as for the posting, um, you have this this cap uh, with a little center band, and it just slides onto the barrel to post it, which is quite nice. The section, nothing too spectacular, black, uh, it, doesn't, it, it tapers a little bit, no flaring. Uh, notice that stab down from the barrel and those threads. Um, I tend to hold this pen the way it's supposed to be held, usually I hold my pens a bit higher. If I were to do that here, I would feel those threads, they're a bit sharp, not terrible, but a bit sharp. And to feel that stab down from the bell, you really have to hold it very highly. I don't think a lot of people would hold it like this. Um, so the stab down, for me, is not really a problem. You have the gold colored nib, it's not actually gold, it says iridium point, uh, and it has this nice little flat ebonite feed. Um, the nib is okay. Uh, it's it's not the smoothest I've ever used. It's a bit on the scratchy side, but it's not terrible. It's something you can probably work on yourself a bit. Um, I think that's all I can say about the pen. It's an eyedropper, so it holds this much ink. You just fill all of that with ink, the barrel. Um, nice, simple method, and uh, it, it works well. So what do I like about it? What do I not like about it? Well, um, I like the looks of the pen, the finish. Ebonite, really cool material, feels nice to the touch. The only problem is it doesn't bounce. So if you were to drop this, it would actually shatter. Um, but apart from that, if you're you know, careful with your pens, should be no problem. Uh, the nib, yes, it's a bit scratchy. That that you know, uh, it, these are not expensive pens. Um, it is what it is. You can always try to smooth it out a bit yourself. Like the eyedropper system, holds a lot of ink. The downside to it is that it's it's hard to, to um, refill the pen on the road. If you're in a train and you, you've got your eyedropper and the bottle of ink and the pen, everything is moving, then it's it's you know going to be ink everywhere. Ink carnage. Uh, so to to make sure you don't actually uh, get into that, um, probably fill it at home. Make sure you get enough ink in there. That's all there's to it. So let's take some measurements. It's a simple pen. It's a design I like. Um, size wise, capped. I wasn't holding it well, sorry. Uh, it's about 131 millimeters, um, uh, which is five and five inches and 11/64th of an inch. Oh wait, I'm sorry, I'm looking at the wrong spot. It is five inches and 10/64th uh, uh, of an inch. All right, then we uncap it. Uncapped. It is. If you think it's easy to use uh, calipers like this, the problem is nib is a very small thing. There we go. I come, okay, I can take the pen out. I, I come to about 100, well, say 14 millimeters. Well, one, a good 113 millimeters, doesn't really matter that much. And that is uh, 2964, 4 inches and 2964 of an inch. How about that? They have the section diameter. Um, the narrowest point that's about eight millimeters. That's twenty sixty fourth of an inch. And at the widest point near where you know where the section meets the barrel, uh, it's about nine millimeters. That's twenty two sixty fourth sixty fourth of an inch. Boom. So that's it. I think what we need is a writing sample. And that's what we're going to do next. I hope this was useful, and um, I'll see you later. Bye bye. 
Alright, so here we go with the Ratnam and Sons number 12. The nib is fine, I would say. Uh, the ink is Gerba Ver Olive. An awfully well chosen name, and the paper is Rhodia. Um, this pen has a nib that's not that bad. It's a little scratchy. It's not as bad as you may fear it is. It may look a little dry, that may be the light ink. Of these Ratnam pens, I think this one is wetter than the number 15. You see I got the number 15 here, whoops, dropping all kinds of pens. This one is a bit dry, you, you get more white in there. It, it dries out a bit sooner, I think. So this green one, I, I like it, number 12. And you see that this is still a bit wet, so that's pretty cool. Alright, how about some fast writing? Looks pretty good to me. Uh, I didn't see any serious skippage or anything. How about some line variation? That is not too shabby. Again, it's a light ink, but there's definitely some line variation to be had under pressure, as you can see here. And then finally, uh, some reverse writing. This would be what you get if you hold the pen upside down, so the feed is pointing upwards and the nib is pointing downwards. Some people like to do that because it gives a finer line. In these pens it feels fairly scratchy, but you will get a very thin line. So if that's what you need, then you can do that. And you know what? That's all there's to it. So I hope that's useful, and uh, I'll see you later. Bye-bye.